you just joined us on the system after dark. This is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. This bulletin application for review of revoke casino license rejected. Prime Minister warns against drunk and disorderly behavior as he opens new $18 million brew house. And over 100 families on Malake Island now enjoy clean, safe drinking water. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Right at the moment, as a rainy first day of the Coca-Cola Games concludes, Natambua High School leads the boys, while Jasper currently tops the girls' scores, and a 19-year-old record has been broken. Full details follow in the sports segment. The Suva High Court has dismissed the case filed against the government by casino developer 100 Sands Limited. Judge Justice David Alfred refused the application for leave to move a judicial review of the government's decision to revoke the company's casino license in February. The license to build a $290 million casino and resort on Denarau Nandi was revoked when the company allegedly failed to comply with the license conditions. In his ruling, Justice Alfred said the Attorney General's decision to revoke the license was legally correct, rational, justified and followed proper procedure. He also said the evidence put forward by 100 Sands Limited in the case didn't satisfy him, hence he would not proceed. The company's lawyer Devanash Sharma says he will now consult his client as to what further legal action can be taken. An $18 million brew house has been opened by Paradise Beverages today, the first phase of investments by the company. However, Prime Minister Vurenge Mbani Marama had a serious message for everyone about drinking habits in Fiji. Edwin Nunn reports. Amidst the celebrations at the launch of this fully automated beer factory, there was a timely message about responsible drinking. The government is specially concerned about recent incidents in Suva and Nusori in which people who have consumed far too much alcohol uh, and, and liquor have behaved unlawfully and harassed uh, ordinary people going about their daily lives. The Prime Minister didn't stop there, sending out a warning to anyone who causes a nuisance while intoxicated. The police are quite rightly cracking down on these incidents and I repeat, as Prime Minister, that they will not be tolerated and the offenders punished with the full force of the law. People have a right to enjoy alcohol, but they must do so without impinging on the rights of others or creating, creating unnecessary disturbances and violence, uh, violations, sorry, uh, violations of the peace. The factory has been built with as much local expertise as possible, with training provided where necessary. Owners of Paradise Beverages, Coca-Cola, says this is part of a $44 million project called Mbulavo or New Life. The brewery itself has been here for 58 years. Um, I have to say from walking around it this morning, some of it looks like it hasn't been touched for 58 years. So it is a wonderful contrast to see the new brew house and to think about what's possible as we continue to modernise this site. After buying the company from Foster's Group in 2012, Coca-Cola has become one of the biggest employers in Fiji. It also paid just over $66 million in taxes in 2014. The opening of this $18 million state-of-the-art brew house now allows Paradise Beverages to increase its annual consumption from 200 million cases to 500 million cases every year. And that is just for local consumption. Edwin Nand, FBC News. 135 families on Malake Island in Ra are enjoying safe, clean water from taps for the very first time. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbani Marama commissioned a water project on the island yesterday. Akusita Tale reports.
Malake Island is a 20-minute boat ride from Rakiraki. All their lives, the residents depended on rainwater and four wells for their cooking, drinking and washing. Yesterday, they turned out in numbers to celebrate an answer to their prayers. No longer are the people of Malake hostage to the long, dry spells that sometimes created acute water shortages on the island. You all know how tough those times were, and especially during those peak periods, like Christmas, when people needed water to cook for the festive season. The days of wells drying up are now over. Our forefathers and elders have been facing a lot of water problems for the past years, and every time they requested a water pipe or build a pipe, it always failed. That problem continued to our generation, and finally today we have a permanent source. The women are no longer um, uh, no longer would be able to to wake up early in the morning to queue up or to line up in the wells and to get water uh, with uh, quite a walking distance, uh, carrying these uh, heavy buckets and drums every morning. We had to use big buckets to draw up water from the wells, and those buckets were very heavy, and it was really hard because we had to struggle. Bainimarama assured more than 400 residents they will receive the same benefits enjoyed by other Fijians in more populated parts of the country. I want each of you to decide for yourself based on what you see all around you. I'm not interested in telling lies, making false promises, or scaring you about threats that don't exist. I'm getting on with the job of serving you better. The $650,000 work involved laying pipes from the Vitilevu mainland across the open channel to the island. Work on the project took seven months with support from 15 residents of Malake. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama today handed over a $154,900 check to Vanuatu High Commissioner Nikeneke Vurumbaravu. The money was raised by students, teachers and Ministry of Education staff during its Mufti Day two weeks ago. The fund is to assist students who are victims of the devastation caused by Cyclone Pam, which ravaged Vanuatu last month, killing 11 people. Receiving the check, Vurumbaravu thanked Bani Marama for Fiji's continued assistance. Thank you. Uh, Fiji is always uh, our, not only our next door neighbor but our big brother in a way. Uh, thank you for your solidarity. And the minister says, uh, bring me, I will put a label on this, this is for schools, and I will transfer it. And thank you, sir. I have the opportunity also for your uh, engineers who have contributed in the same uh, thing that they fix our schools. Thank you. Over 50 Fijian personnel led by the Commissioner Western Manasa Tangiva Kimbao are in Vanuatu carrying out rehabilitation works. The Fiji National Provident Fund is looking to implement a medical scheme for its members. CEO Aisake Taito says the fund is exploring this opportunity as part of its continued efforts to add value to members' benefits and enhance their quality of life. FBC News understands the medical scheme will be for all members. It is not yet clear when the scheme is expected to be implemented. Still to come on FBC News, Fiji commended for steps taken to increase awareness on immunization. Mr. Ben. Great words there from Lucky Dube and Babana. I hope you enjoyed that number. Different colors just for you on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Louise with you on the center show. Well, thank you so much for the sweet company. This is Alana Miles, one of my favorites, and Black Velvet for you. Hi there. Join me on the center show every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. for the best sounds on Gold FM. Only the classic hits.
A 27-year-old Fijian national has been charged with murder of his girlfriend after her body was found in the boot of a car on the New South Wales south coast on Wednesday. Chasai Joey Vosikata and girlfriend 35-year-old Daniela Dia de Rio were reported missing on Monday by family members. He allegedly fled the car after police discovered the body and was arrested yesterday afternoon following a 24-hour search. Australian media report the suspect was living a secret double life with a girlfriend in Australia while he had a wife and children in Fiji. It is the choice of Australian and New Zealand employers whether they recruit women or not in the seasonal employment scheme. Minister for Employment Chochi Kondrote says the gender balance in the first contingent of 24 workers for the New Zealand recognised employer worker scheme was out of their hands. Maggie Boyle with the story. Minister responsible Chiochi Konrote today cleared the air on Fiji's position to ensure that women as well as men will be recruited in the overseas seasonal employment program. The uh, seasonal workers program with Australia and New Zealand is very much employer driven. Now the responsibility of the ministry is to select people for the ready employment pool and then the employers from New Zealand and Australia can come and take their pick. And with the Australian Seasonal Work Program already identifying four prospective employers, Conrote says they can only lobby the respective governments to include women. Under the agreement, it is the employer who has the final call. You know, and we have very little influence in trying to persuade people you know, in New Zealand to take more women. Uh, I've been assured that hopefully you know, when the market opens up, um, in the not too distant future, I hope we will be able to send more women down. He adds, however, with the remaining six people for the New Zealand pilot program expected to leave in June, there may be one or two positions taken up by women. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The World Health Organization has commended Fiji on the great strides made over the past few decades in improving vaccine delivery services and creating awareness on immunization. Ellen Stalls has the story. Immunization is one of the most successful and cost-effective health innovations as it prevents between two to three million deaths every year globally. Immunization Week was launched today at the McCoy Health Center and while the WHO has praised Fiji's efforts in increasing immunization awareness, it says there is still more work to be done. Gaps still remain and the great efforts and commitments are needed to close the gap at a national and sub-national level. WHO remains committed to support and work with you all and all health partners. Assistant Minister for Health Vina Badnaga says work is being done to address areas Fiji has been lacking in. The Ministry of Health and Medical Services has constructed some targeted approaches and action plans to address and effectively manage these gaps. Increased awareness programs, using every available opportunities and networks, timely follow-up immunization defaulters, maintaining consistency in delivering of planned shift immunization clinics with adequate vaccine supplies. She also stressed the need for parents and guardians to be proactive and ensure their children are protected from vaccine-preventable diseases such as measles and polio. Immunization Week is celebrated from the 24th to the 30th of April in nine Pacific Island countries and territories, including Fiji. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. Quality education should be delivered to students all the time. This was one of the main issues highlighted during the Fiji Principals Association Conference in Suva. What the Sony Raikondroka reports. A major challenge teachers face every day is having children with different abilities in their classroom. The Education Ministry says this should not deter teachers from doing their duty. As teachers' responsibility to be providing quality learning uh, in all our classrooms where all children are supposed to be learned. The ministry is looking at options at providing training for teachers to help them address this issue. Input of our teacher training institutions in terms of training the teachers so that they can be able to teach the t students of the 21st century with all the different abilities. Fiji Principals Association President Dola Tilendua says the ministry has to ensure that students also meet requirements. Members are concerned about 
uh, absenteeism from schools, um, those who intentionally keep out of school and then they show up during examinations. Those are the little things that we are tackling currently and professional matters like uh, non-readers and other little things that we believe um, are well within our scope of work. The Minister of Education is reminding various school heads and teachers that quality learning is paramount in education. What is on Rikan Roka, FBC News. The stage is set for the annual Digicel Today FM Park Jam. The event which targets all age groups this year has more fun activities and better music. This year the event will be held at the Suva Foreshore in a safe and controlled environment. Today FM Program Director Alan Stevens says there is something for everyone. It's a whole family event, so you can bring your family down. Um, right after the Coca-Cola Games, we invite everybody from the Coke Games to come down and enjoy yourselves and continue the celebration at the uh, Suva Foreshore for the Today FM Park Jam. It starts at 6 and it ends at 11, so we extend an invitation to all of you. Come down. Bands such as Rako, Makare, Savunin de Lailomai, Musty Dance Group and Vo will be performing. Now to sports. Day one of the Coca-Cola Games. Such an electrifying atmosphere at the ANZ Stadium. And I understand some records have been broken, Jamie. That's right, Zach. You will take a look at that and the latest from the Coke Games right after the break. As well as the Vodafone Fiji 7s team named for the Glasgow and London 7s. Stay with us. Choo choo! Hey hey, Namaste Fiji. Aapke har ek problem ke dawa lekar main aa gayi hu. 9 se 12 baje tak aapki saheli Reno. Choo choo choo! 40 ne 20 ka dikhna hai. Main hu na aapke saath mein Mirchi FM par 9 se 12 baje tak Monday to Friday. Mirchi, it's hot. Yoni borong itu main radio Fiji One, toto katun dan rakyat nangau nani kuat di takin yoni nando, pati tu main nanda nangau nunggu, mereka main naru, ada nunggu pinggir rapi nasi singgal nani kuat. Ni sama gula pinaka, ayah wana ikan mana langi, nama kia wana bi mataka main nadi waki naru, ada bi singgal lepu main nampu ni tikin borong bukan radio Fiji One, nando mai biti wong gani bi ani ada. Gospel High School's Aaron Powell has won gold in the Senior Boys Blue Ribbon 100 meter event. The national rep was highly favored to cross the tape first and showed why he will be an athlete to look out for in the 200 and 4x100 meter relay tomorrow. And they're on their way now, and a remarkable start again, and it's the start of further out. It's the start of Gospel High School still coming through. Gospel High School leading them, and it will take it away as in the middle lane, the lane four. Meanwhile, meanwhile in the girls' event, Eunice Mbese set a new record with a time of 12.13 seconds, slashing 0 0.01 seconds of the records he set earlier in the day. She, oh, she got a remarkable start, and the way she goes, she's showing the way to everybody. Coming down the middle of the track, on the left side of her is Jasper. He's, she's the nearest, and she's gone away and wins by nine meters for the time of 12.13. And in the middle tally, Natambua Secondary School leads the boys' division with eight gold, four silver, and three bronze, followed by QVS and Morris Brothers High School. In the girls' division, Jasper Williams leads with 10 gold, 5 silver and 3 bronze. Andy Dakambao School is in second place, followed by St. Joseph Secondary School. A total of 16 records were broken today. And speaking of records, national rep Eunice Mbese didn't take long to stamp her mark in the competition with a record-breaking performance in the heats of the senior girls' 200 meters. Bese smashed the 18-year-old record set in 1997 by former sprint queen Makile Simbulikyombo of 25.14 seconds with a new time of 24.99 seconds. 
and they're on the way a very quick start there and a grand start by the gospel high school girl Eunice Messi she's got to be a, a big gap on them as they come around she's 20 meters in front Andy Thackenbell on the inside the only challenger for with any remote chance of getting nearer Bessie's striking at home taking it easy and no problem at all she had win by five meters from Andy Thackenbell both of them 30 meters ahead of the rest but a wonderful run by Gospel High School. Now the first gold medal to be awarded at the Coke Games each year is always the sub-junior girls 1500 meter event. This year the gold medal went to Lekutu Secondary School's Vika Tuilomana in what will be a memorable achievement in a second appearance at the Games. Talent Adakadaka reports. Wearing only one sock was not enough to prevent Vika Tuilomana from winning the first gold medal at the 2015 Coca-Cola Games. The soft-spoken lass says the tough competition pushed her to the limit, but she had enough in the tank to cross the finish line first. I feel happy and confidence, confidence that I will win. Tuilomana credits her extended support group for the win and is gearing up for her next event in the 800 meters race tomorrow. And my teachers too. Tuilomana's achievement will have made the journey from Bua all the more special, and the experience will be one she and her family can treasure for a lifetime. Talent of the Kazak, FBC Sports. Natambua High School, Sevedi Matanitombua was the first athlete to set a new record in the 2015 Coke Games. The year nine student won the boys' 1500 meter race in a record time of 4 minutes 21.48 seconds. The previous record of 4 minutes 24.12 seconds was set last year by Isikeli Wasiangali of Mbua College. Uh, I feel uh, good and I feel uh, proud of myself. Martini Tombo is aiming for another record-breaking performance in the 800-meter race tomorrow. Moving away from the Coke Games, today capped off a memorable week for Warden's playmaker Kitsio Netalinga after being named in the Vodafone Fiji 7 squad to the Glasgow and London tournaments. A week after helping Warden's Gold win the Fiji Bitanawaka 7's title on his 22nd birthday, Talinga was the lone new cap in the 12-member squad. Talinga comes in for regular forward Tasa Veramalua who misses out due to a knee injury. This is the only change to the squad that participated in the last two tournaments in Hong Kong and Tokyo. I will be giving my utmost best to help the team. If I get the chance to run on the field, I'm ready to do my part in the final two tournaments. Ah, see, he's young. He was very excited when we told him he had been selected. You know, you could see the smile. It was his birthday this week. Uh, he got player of the tournament at Nawaka, got a free phone, $500, and then we pick him for the team this weekend. So he's, um, he's on cloud nine right now. So if you can carry that sort of enthusiasm and energy into Glasgow and London, then we've got a good player on our hands. Fiji is pooled with hosts Scotland, Wales and Portugal in the Glasgow Sevens, which will be held on May 9th and 10th. That was your sports for tonight, but be sure to tune in tomorrow to FBC TV to follow live coverage of the final day of the Coke Games with Graham Eden, Raymond Stodat and Indra Singh. That's it for me. Good evening. Former Sri Lankan airline CEO Peter Hill, who rejoined the national carrier in an advisory capacity, is reported to be leaving to head Fiji Airways. Sri Lankan Airlines chairman Ajit Diaz has told Sri Lanka's Daily Mirror that Hill is leaving because he was offered the position. However, in a brief statement, Fiji Airways says the board is seeing three shortlisted candidates this weekend. It cannot be confirmed that Hill is one of the shortlisted candidates. Some showers were experienced over the eastern parts and interior of the large islands today. Generally fine weather prevailed elsewhere. A trough of low pressure lies slow moving over Vanuatu and extends eastwards over Samoa and the Cook Islands. The capital city recorded the lowest temperature for the day, hitting 28 degrees on the chart. Lombasa recorded 32 degrees, the highest for the day. It looks like it's going to be a wet weekend. Tomorrow there will be some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. 
Elsewhere fine apart from afternoon or evening showers, moderate southeast winds fresh at times. And the further outlook fine apart from brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the large islands. Recapping our top stories. Silver High Court rejects application for reviews of revoked casino license. Prime Minister warns against drunk and disorderly behavior as he opens new $18 million brew house and over 100 families on Malakia Island now enjoy clean and safe drinking water. To our poll question for this week, we're asking, would stiffer penalties for traffic offenses be a deterrent for road accidents? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That's FBC News for tonight. You can join Akusi Tatale from tomorrow with our weekend news. I'll be back on Monday. Until then, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Ni Motomanda. घर संसार में आपका स्वागत है आपका अपना छोटा सा स्वर जहाँ प्यार भरे रिश्ते पलते हैं जहाँ हेल्थी रहने की सलाह दी जाती है जहाँ हम आपको और भी सुंदर बनाते हैं और जहाँ स्वाद की सौगात भी है नमस्कार मैं हूँ पल्लवी सोमवार से शुक्रवार 9 से 12 तक रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन पर घर संसार में शामिल रहिए मेरे साथ ऐसा सुंदर सपना अपना